Hello, friends. Welcome to Noonish Prayer for Thursday, July the 30th. Today, July 30th, is National Whistleblower Day. Now, let me read just a little bit to you today on what I learned from the National Calendar um, website. National Whistleblower Day commemorates July 30th, 1778, the day the Continental Congress passed a historic and unanimous resolution. The resolution honored 10 sailors and Marines who spoke out against their commander's abuses of his office. In doing so, the Founding Fathers declared it was the duty of all Americans to give the earliest information to Congress or other proper authority of any misconduct, frauds, or misdemeanors. And the United States Senate first recognized National Whistleblower Day in 2013. So happy National Whistleblower Day. Perhaps a hard thing to think about how you might celebrate it, but let me suggest this. Let us give thanks to God for all of those at various times in our nation's history who have had the courage to speak the truth to power. And then let us also pray for our own courage to speak, to speak out when we see something that is wrong. So happy National Whistleblower Day. Would you please join me in prayer? Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our scripture lesson today comes from the beginning of the 20th chapter of the book of Acts. Let me just recap. In chapter 19, we saw all sort of, um, sort of conflicts going on. We had people who were not understanding that John's baptism was not sufficient, and so they were taught about that. We had uh, witches and uh, warlocks that were coming out of the woodwork um, and that actually made a clean break with their black magic backgrounds and were, were uh, converted to a belief in the word of the master. And then finally yesterday we read about the goddess Artemis, and uh, I thought it was very interesting to see how in this early time you see some, um, um, some uh, acceptance of diversity, right? Um, because the, the rulers came in and said, look, if these people want to preach Jesus, um, it's not going to upset uh, our culture of people uh, who are worshiping Artemis. So let's just kind of live together in peace. So uh, an interesting early church uh, example of, of tolerance. But now in chapter 20, uh, Paul gets back on the road. With things back to normal, 
Paul called the disciples together and encouraged them to keep up the good work in Ephesus. Then, saying his goodbyes, he left for Macedonia. Traveling through the country, passing from one gathering to another, he gave constant encouragement, lifting their spirits and charging them with fresh hope. Then he came to Greece and stayed on for three months. Just as he was about to set sail for Syria, the Jews cooked up a plot against him. So he went the other way, back by land, back through Macedonia, and gave them the slip. His companions for the journey were Sopter, son of Pyrrhus, from Berea, Aristarchus and Secundus, both Thessalonians, Gaius from Derbe, Timothy, and the two from Western Asia, Tychius and Trophimus. They went on ahead and waited for us in Troas. Meanwhile, we stayed in Philippi for Passover week and then set sail. Within five days, we were again in Troas and stayed a week. We met on Sunday to worship and celebrated the Master's Supper. Paul addressed the congregation. Our plan was to leave first thing in the morning, but Paul talked on way past midnight. We were meeting in a well-lighted upper room. A young man named Eutychus was sitting in an open window. As Paul went on and on, Eutychus fell sound asleep and toppled out of the third-story window. When they picked him up, he was dead. Paul went down, stretched himself on him, and hugged him hard. No more crying, he said. There's life in him yet. Then Paul got up and served the master's supper and went on telling stories of the faith until dawn. On that note, they left, Paul going one way, the congregation another, leading the boy off alive and full of life themselves. In the meantime, the rest of us had gone on ahead to the ship and sailed for Assos, where we planned to pick up Paul. Paul wanted to walk there, and so had made these arrangements earlier. Things went according to plan. We met him in Assos, took him on board, and sailed to Mytilene. The next day, we put in opposite Chius, Samus a day later, and then Miletus. Paul had decided to bypass Ephesus so that he wouldn't be held up in Asia province. He was in a hurry to get to Jerusalem in time for the Feast of Pentecost, if at all possible. Here ends today's reading. And I would just like to note for public record that while I may not have the eloquence of Paul, at least I don't preach all night long, nor in my observations have I ever seen anyone fall asleep and fall out of a window. I have seen some people sleeping, but just saying. Let us continue in prayer. Show us your mercy, O God, and grant us your salvation. Give us the joy of your saving help again, and sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Give peace in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Keep the nations under your care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and sustain me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come before you. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Glorious God, your generosity waters the world with goodness, and you cover creation with abundance. Awaken in us a hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit. 
and with this food fill all the starving world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. O God, in you we live and move and have our being. Guide and govern us in this day by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but remember that always we are walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, before I send you on your way, I actually want to do a brief repeat of how I ended yesterday. Uh, You may remember that I had forgotten to plug in my earbuds yesterday, and I did notice when I quickly reviewed the video that it was a little harder than normal to hear me. So since I have my earbuds and microphone on today, I just want to repeat in a much less rambling way uh, what I said yesterday, and that is this. It's been on my heart for quite, uh, quite a while now that we need in this congregation, we need to be a part of the conversation that is happening all around this country, the conversation about race and racism. And so I am in the process of narrowing down a resource, uh, choosing a resource that I'd like to use to facilitate that conversation, and I'll be able to let you know about that resource, hopefully by early next week. But I just want to prime the pump a little bit right now to let you know that this conversation is going to be coming, and that I sincerely hope that in one way or another, you will become a part of the conversation Uh, I do believe that as Christians, we are called to make a difference in this world, called to help to bring God's kingdom to earth. And in God's kingdom, uh, no one is judged or held back for any reason of prejudice, whether it be conscious or unconscious. And so I believe that we as Christians have a vital role to play in having this conversation about race and then about moving not just from conversation, but into concrete action in the world to bring the kingdom closer. So uh, I encourage you to begin thinking about this conversation and get ready to participate in whatever way you can as as we have it going forward. Just one other thing to tell you, and that is that today is uh, um, being an every other Thursday. Uh, It is one of the days when we are distributing food um, for the Whitehall Copley Hunger Initiative efforts. Um, Back behind me um, in Fritz Hall, all of the bags have been gathered for distribution. And probably as we speak, actually probably the morning session is just over, uh, but there'll be another session coming up tonight where people will drive through and get some supplemental food resources to help them to, to cope with this, this difficult time. So as always, I encourage you to be generous in your giving to the Whitehall Food Pantry and to their efforts and also to be earnest in your prayers for those who are struggling in this time. Let us Bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.